Hi, this is Drake Oakey, Athletic Director here at Memphis Community Schools. We're here for another edition of the Memphis Team Report. We've had a great, great year of sports that have taken place, and we're already now looking forward to next year. What we've just had to do is, we've, in the last few months, we've had an extensive search for a new head football coach that's going to revitalize our football program and take it to the levels that we all anticipate and we're all excited to get to. Uh, his name is Mark Brimmer. And Mark, welcome to Memphis Community Schools. Well, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here, that's for sure. So, excited to get going now that school is out, it's summertime. To me, that's football season. So, we're ready to get going. Well, uh, we're excited to have you here. Uh, we went through, I'll uh, just give the people there, we went through about a four month search trying to find the right, right person to fit the position. And we know we did that in, in being able to hire you. I just want to share a few things with the community and also our kids. Um, how many years have you been coaching football, Mark? This will be my 25th year coaching. Uh, coached uh, about four different schools, coached from Division One down to Division Seven. And then uh, had a couple of years I spent with the Detroit Lions organization. Um, so helped start a high school football league about 10 years ago for kids who didn't have an opportunity to play. Uh, that took off, expanded uh, throughout the state, throughout um, a couple of teams in Ohio, Indiana, around it. Um, it's been around the game the whole, my whole life with it, but uh, this will be my 25th year coaching. Um, you know, I've already started working with the, the, the players, and uh, you know, every time I work with them, I get, I get more excited about the season and, and the potential that, that we have. So we've got a lot of work to do for sure. Um, but uh, you know, the kids seem eager to learn. Uh, they're eager to get better, and it's all we can do is build from there. And, and like you'd mentioned, revitalize the program, and uh, we're going to do that for sure. Uh, how long that takes, you know, time will tell, but um, we're on the right path, that's for sure. Well, Mark, one of the things that I liked when we were interviewing you and looking at your, at your past, is, as you just alluded to, not only have you had a lot of experience as a head coach of a varsity program, but you've worked with a lot of kids all the way down to the youth, and we know that's how you basically stabilize and build a program. Um, you know, we, we are definitely a football community. Uh, we've been down a little bit the last few years. Um, but from our superintendent to our principal, all the way down to our youth coaches, you got a lot of excitement. You brought a lot of excitement. The buzz is out there ever since your first meeting. So. Yeah, since your first meeting, we had, I think, was it 50 kids or 48 kids or something like that? Yeah, it was, it was in the 40s, um, for sure. And, you know, one of the things that we want to establish here, and, you know, uh, hopefully we're off to a good start to do that, is, you know, we want to build a program, you know, like you said, from the youth on up. And, and to do that, it's not just about going out and, winning games for them. We want to teach kids the, the, how the game is played. We want to teach kids multiple positions as well. You never know from the time the kid's in fourth grade till he gets into junior how big he's going to be, how fast he's going to be. You know, so we want to get away from kids focusing on just, you know, I just want to play this position. But make them feel, along with those coaches down at that level, that they're all part of one program. You know, when, when you do that, uh, we all have a common goal. And so we want those kids to come up through the middle school. And uh, like I started to say a minute ago is, you know, we want to reestablish a JV program as well. I think it's very important uh, for, for the success of a varsity program that uh, those younger kids coming into ninth grade, uh, kids in 10th grade, that they're just getting that experience, that playing experience. And uh, so that's, that's certainly a goal uh, as we come in here and we, and we get started. Um, and, and like I said, I, Hopefully that's going to happen, happen this year for sure, um, and then uh, you know expand expand from there. But um, we've got some great lower level coaches already in place, so we're excited about that, and uh, you know we want the kids, the school, the community to be excited about the program. Again. Well, they are, and like I said, the first meeting we had again, I think in the high 40s, a lot of kids interested, which is fantastic because last year we had I think 32 in the whole program. Um, now I know you've been handling, you've been holding. Uh, some practices, some weight room, stuff like that. Why don't you tell us how you feel about the attitude of the kids and the commitment that they've been showing? Now, we've had uh, some Sunday evening meetings to you know, get on the board or get in the gym there and just kind of start teaching kids what it is we're going to be doing. Uh, we've had good, out, good turnouts with that. Since school got out, uh, we've been having weight room three days a week. Um, we've gotten good participation from that and could always be better, as you all know as a coach. Um, but you know we're getting there. And the kids, when they show up, they're ready to work. 
you know, and after we get done lifting, we lift for, for about an hour. I've got six, seven, eight kids wanting to stick around and throw or, you know, go over plays on the board and stuff like that. So that's encouraging as well. And that's it's, it's great to see. And it's a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. For sure. And as I said to earlier, you know, from our superintendent or principal, we're all sports acclimated people. Our superintendent played football here. Um, you know, uh, I know I tried, I think when we were meeting before you were hired, we shared a lot of that where our community is. And, you know, even some of those years that we've struggled, uh, we seem to have a packed house on weekends. You know, that's every great. Friday night it's a packed house and it's, that's exciting. Yes, and uh, I know why we hired you. Um, you know, because like you said, of your experience, not only at the head coaching all the way down to the youth. Tell us what made you decide to come to Memphis, because I know you had other opportunities. What made you decide to come here? Right. Uh, just uh, the opportunity to help build the program again. I know, um, you know, years ago, uh, coached at another school, we had Memphis on the program, you know, on our schedule with it. And Memphis was a, was a tough, tough team at the point. And, uh, like you said, I know how much the, the community loves the, the program, loves football. And, you know, my job with my, my experience is to come back and just re revitalize that, rebuild that from there. And it's going to take some time. You know, nothing's going to happen overnight with it. But, um, you know, I, I want Memphis to, like I said, going into my 25th year, I want this to be my last job. That's for sure. And so uh, however long you guys will have, have me here, uh, I want to establish a, a, a program, a youth all the way up to varsity program. I said that um, you know when people see us on the schedule, they're going to be worried about us, you know, and uh, we're we'll get there for sure with it. And when the kids see that, and the kids see that you know what they're when they're part of the program, that they're part of something that's bigger than themselves with it. And they're going to learn characteristics that they're going to take and apply uh, in the classroom, apply in life, apply in college, a career, uh, and that uh, everybody that comes through this program are gonna leave with those characteristics and they're gonna be part of this football family for the rest of their lives. Uh, and that's what we want. And uh, want the community to be behind that. And like I said, be proud and excited about, about uh, what we have here in Memphis. Well, uh, like I said, in the last couple of years that I've been here, there's been a lot of excitement, a lot of support. and. You know, we've created a few things that hope you help you. I know this past year, KPAC came into our league, so right. we, we sort of reinstated that rivalry. Right. We did a, we have a nice little thing that we created, uh, the class of 69, and they won my sign. That's a, my sign. Right. So I want it back from Memphis, so that's, the, that's your first tall task. But with that being said, you know, we've had tremendous success in the classroom with our kids. Um, we football program that's the one thing that I'm proud about the most um, was when we go to meet with other athletic directors we talk about the struggles of athletics um, it's there like anywhere but I've been very proud at how hard our kids and our coaches work as well as our teachers and our administration um, our success rate in the classroom how important do you feel that is uh, in establishing your program I think it's very important and that's part of the, the players understanding about being part of a program that's bigger than themselves is that you know, we want to instill as coaches, we want to instill in those players to expect more out of themselves. And you know, we want to uh, develop, uh, again, the program, when players are a part of that program, and when you go into a classroom and you've got that Memphis football shirt on, that the teacher's not going, oh no, here's another Memphis. We want a teacher saying, yes, I got a you know, Memphis football player over there. Because they're gonna be leaders in the classroom as well. You know, lead by example. You know, I, I challenged the kids uh, uh, just the last Sunday meeting uh, we had that, you know, when you get back in class, I, you know, I challenge every football player, sit in the front front two rows, because you know they're the same about mm -hmm. that, and we'll sit in the rows oh, yeah. and that, you know. Uh, you're at in the lunchroom, and you get up from the table, and there's something on the table, whether it's yours or not, pick it up and throw it away. People are going to see that, you know, and, and so that that's the, the things that we want to start encouraging players to do and just hold themselves to a higher standard and if you're going to be part of the program that I'm going to hold you to a higher standard as well. Um, another thing we're going to establish come come fall is a mentor program. We're going to have the juniors and seniors kind of mentor the incoming freshmen uh, at least for the first couple of weeks of the season make sure that they can get in their locker make sure they know where their classes are um, just make sure you know the or understanding, you know, homework and things of that nature. Get them acclimated because it's it's a big change for them, especially when you're 
junior high and high school are kind of combined a little bit, can be a little intimidating. So we're going to have, have things like that, and, and again, it's just part of the bigger picture that we're going to try to establish here as a program. Well, I mean, those are great ideas. You know, we have an elementary that's right across the street, and that elementary principal has been uh, very supportive when it comes to, like, we'll go over there uh, at homecoming week, and the football team will come the band, the cheerleaders, of course. So uh, we have I know, have tried to set up where our kids will go over there and read on a Friday, yeah. maybe, or just walk around the cafeteria. So, you know, those things that are established and what you're looking to bring, I think, is going to be, you know, very successful uh, building the type of kid that we want yeah. there. And... Uh, you know, the parents have been very supportive. Uh, our boosters are, I'll be honest with you, I've been in several schools, they're second to none. You know, what are some things, you know, now that you've been through our weight rooms like that, you know, every school can never have enough. What are some things that you see that maybe, you know, we can help to support you? Well, you know, always as a coach, and you know this as a coach, your, your list never goes away, right? There's, there's always something. But uh, I think one of the things that has to be established in the when you want to be a winning program, whether it's in football, basketball, baseball, track, to me it doesn't matter. I've, I've coached four different sports with it. It starts in the weight room. You know, you. And I was just telling the kids this uh, this morning that that you know, why not be the 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 optimal physical shape that you can be in for yourself, not just for a sport, but just in general. You know, you're working out. Uh, on a regular basis, you know what that does to your mindset when you're sitting in, in class. You know it, it increases your focus with it. But if you're physically ready to go, because whatever game you're playing, it's always going to be against somebody else. Mm -hmm. So come fourth quarter, second half, uh, end of the season, you get in the game seven, eight, nine with it. You want to be in the best physical shape you you can be. And so for me, putting importance on getting in the weight room. Um, in lifting, and not just lifting to see how much weight you can lift, but doing it correctly. Um, I, I tell the kids every day, I, I don't care if you're just lifting a bar with it. Do it correctly first, and we'll worry about adding weight later, but you do it right. And then take care of your body afterwards, you know, you, whether it's a practice, it's a workout. Don't go up to the gas station, buy a bag of Doritos and a Mountain Dew to replenish, you know, what you just worked off with them. Get, get some good nutrition. Well, the gas station is one of my biggest supporters, so <laughs> they can go up there and get water or something. Well, they've got, they've got protein up there, too. And I said, even, even if it's just a chocolate milk, get some, get some of that protein in you, just not a bag of Doritos or a Mountain Dew. Sure. Go do that on the weekend or something like that. But uh, no, just put an importance on, on the weight room. And, you know, being, being in our weight room, um, you know, to be honest with you, it's probably the smallest weight room I've, I've been part of in, in, in 25 years. Um, but that only means there's room for growth. You know, and I think when, when the kids, you know, see that, that growth and they're a part of that, again, it just helps them make, make them feel a part of the program. And whether it's the boosters helping out with that or whoever it may be, kind of helps them make them feel like they're a part of the program too. Part of the overall athletic program, not just for football. Uh, I think every athlete, athlete should be in there, male, female. Uh, should be in there again, being the best that they can be. You know, that's, I couldn't agree more. Um, you know, you got you've got a couple months. But we both know that that couple months goes by fast, especially fast. Yeah. at summertime. Uh, why don't you tell the community some things that you have coming up, so that if I'm a parent at home and my child, you know, is interested in playing, whether it's junior high or, or, or high school football, um, why don't you share with them a few things that you have coming up in the schedule in the next couple months before the actual season begins? Well, this week in particular, uh, we have a team camp. Uh, this is for freshmen through seniors. Um, for football, it's going to be a two-day camp. It's going to run from 9 o'clock in the morning to 11.30 in the morning. And then just, again, an introduction to actually get outside for, for once and get on the field um, and start running through things that we're doing. Um, and of course, at this time of year, everything's non-contact with it. Um, we've got a couple of uh, seven-on-sevens. Uh, set up with Peck High School. We teamed up with them to do a couple of seven on sevens. Um, and then we got another team camp uh, at the end of July, July 30th and 31st, uh, that we like to do in the evening over here on the, on the game field uh, to start to get kids excited about it. You know? So if you're out in the community, uh, see us out there, feel free to stop by. You know, I welcome anybody, a parent, relative, just a community member. If you see us out there practicing, stop by and, and take a look at what we're doing. I, I welcome that all, all the time. But, you know, we have an open door uh, for sure. And um, we've got uh, weight room Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays at 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. 
Um, the kids, like I said, they come in, they work. Um, you know, it's not a social hour by any means. They, they, they know what's expected of them. And uh, again, we're in there making sure that they're doing things right. Um, and then uh, uh, the season starts, uh, official practice starts August 12th. And we've got to be ready to, to rock and roll then. So make sure that uh, you got your physicals in by August 12th please when we get there so uh, you know we're going to be busy during the summer uh, that but you know it, it goes fast and in there we've got two down weeks where we can't do anything uh, the first week in July and then the first week in, in August we can't do anything so we really got to fit everything into that that small window that we have um, I, I, again one of the things I, I tell the kids is I think we're down to about 17 actual days to get ready for for you know, August 12th with this, so we've got to use our time wisely. But um, you know, with the with the uh, junior high program, um, they're going to get started. Um, I, I believe that last week in August, if I'm not yeah, mistaken, yeah. I forget the forget the date with it. Um, but again, we've got a great junior high coach uh, in in place, uh, Adam Bergen, uh, and um, so excited about that. And, you know, like I said, we're, we're here to teach the kids how to play the game, um, you know, keep them uh, you know, as safe as we can. I know a lot of parents worry about that, especially younger kids. You know, the game's safer than it's ever been with it. And, you know, so we teach proper tackling techniques. So a lot of things are, are taught, um, practice a lot of tackling dummies, so it's not one-on-one, -on -one, things like that. Um, but uh, just learning the game. So from seventh grade on up, uh, we, we can't ever have enough too many kids with it. So if you're on, you know, like to come out or you're new to the community, come on out. Well, fantastic. Well, Mark, I know we're excited to have you here and we're excited, I'm excited to work with you. And I know the kids are enjoying, you know, enjoying everything you brought to them so far. So that's good to hear. Uh, obviously, you know, this may not hopefully be our only meeting. Well, you know, I try to meet with the coaches during the year. But um, again, welcome to Memphis. Welcome to be in the yellow jacket and I uh, wish you the best. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Glad Mark. to be here. Thanks, Mark. Thank we will be back in a few minutes just to go over the rest of uh, our expectations for our upcoming year and also all some of the great accolades we had for the 2018-2019 school year. Thank you. to be a good dad. You just need to spend time with your kids. It takes a man to be a dad. Back to the Sting Report again, Drake Oakley, Athletic Director of Memphis Community Schools. Um, I'm, I know you had the opportunity now to meet Mark Brimmer, our new head football coach. He's bringing a lot of excitement, and we're excited to have him a part of our program in our school. Our kids seem to be really following his lead, and we're expecting some really good things to transpire not only this year, but in the very, you know, very near future. So, um, again, I'm glad you had an opportunity to see meet Mark. We had some really exciting things take place over the spring sports season this year. Lori, um, Lori Sanborn, our track coach, now in only our second year, took a team that last year just started out, and this year we were very competitive in all our track meets. We had some kids not only uh, do very well at our track meets, we had one gentleman who, in his very first year of running track, broke the school record twice in a long jump, and that would be Trevor Nim. So um, we're going to miss Trevor in all our sports, but track, he really made an impression, and he left his senior year. Uh, he'd left on a high note with a school record. So we're very proud of you, Trevor. Our, also, our girls softball team, if you had a chance to see them play, 
Uh, coach Adam Walsh has done a fantastic job just in a couple years as head coach. He's taken them from uh, a struggling program to a program that's very competitive. They won a lot of games this year. They were very competitive in the league. They put a they had a game in the districts against Elmont, a very good opponent, and our girls definitely uh, took it to the limit and had a chance to win the game there in the last few innings. So we're very proud of our girls softball program and our JV coach Logan Clare, who's now also a teacher here, uh, former alumnus or actually an alumnus here at Memphis, did a great job. So our future is bright in softball. Our boys baseball program. Well, they almost won a league championship. They had a great year. In spite of all the weather and all the bad conditions they had to endure to go out there, and they were, in the last week of the season, they had a chance to tie for the division championship. Unfortunately, we lost a tough game, um, but at, up until that point, our boys' baseball team was very successful, and at one point, they were even ranked uh, in, the, in the Macomb County uh, ranking. So our boys' baseball team and Coach, Coach Walsh, Guy Walsh, has done a fantastic job of taking our program to the highest levels. We had a new JV coach this year, Doug O'Neill, who came over from uh, New Life Christian, and he had that program just a buzz. He had those kids playing very good baseball. Some of those kids had never even played baseball before, and he had taught them the game. They were very competitive in all their JV games. So the future is bright for Coach Walsh and our Memphis Jacket baseball program. Coach Andrew Rohde, and I'm in his 19th year here coaching at Memphis for girls soccer, won a back-to-back -back league championship this year which we were very proud to be able to go out there, and they did it on our field against their arch rival, Marlette. Uh, the last two years, our girls have won the league, and this year they did it with a clean sweep. They did not lose a league game, home or away. So congratulations to Coach Rohde, congratulations to the girls, as they did a fantastic job. We've also had a lot of student athletes that won some really great awards this year. Uh, in our spring season, uh, Trevor Nim, to go back to Trevor, was acknowledged as not only as an all-star basketball player in St. Clair County, and he played in the all-star game just the other night at SC4. He was also, for the first time in, I believe they said a decade, we had a Memphis boys basketball player make it to an all-star game in Macomb County. And he played that two weeks ago down at Macomb Community College. He represented Memphis in the basketball program and himself very well. And we, again, thank Trevor and congratulations. We had several baseball players that won awards this year as all league players. We had Dawson Steer, senior, as an outfielder who also played in the All-Star game. We also had Ben Blanco, senior, who was all league and played in the All-Star game. And then we also had Coach Guy Walsh's son, Camden Walsh, who was also all league player as well. And we had a bunch of honorable mentions to go with that. But we're very proud of the great success that they had. Emily Ross on her girls soccer team, or also won Athlete Week of, athlete of the Week in uh, the Times-Herald newspaper. So they were voted in by all the local community people and she did a fantastic job to finish out her senior year. So with that being said, now we're just, the seasons are over. Our summer, we have all our, from our football to our basketball, to our soccer, to our baseball programs, they're out working hard, getting their 15 days of workout in and we're expecting some great things from all of them come this fall. So until next year, thank you for a great, successful year. Thanks for all your support, Memphis community, and we look forward to seeing you again next year. This is Drake Oakey, Memphis Elect Collector. Have a great summer, and we'll see you next year. Goodbye.